had a fiber ring driver. She just made me think of something. If the old management company, the one that's there now, couldn't do, couldn't yeah. make with this yeah. clubhouse, yeah. what makes you think that another Some management company or the bad. town could run, run Let me try and answer that. And again, else. I think I just said it. The problem that we have is paying a management company enough money so it would be profitable and work for the management company. And also, having the management company pay us enough money to have pay, to help service our $7 million debt. It is very hard to reconcile those two competing interests. The management company will be happy to be, find a lot of management companies to do it, but they won't pay us enough money for us to do well. This may be a situation where we are, are in the unenviable position of having to find some other alternative to make this work. That's why the authority, the commission, the committee, will be charged, and experts that we have hired that are looking at this for us, will be charged with defining the best way for us to go forward and make this work. It probably can't work if you have, and we said this with, with MDM, it probably can't work if he expects to get his fair return, which he's entitled to, and also pay the town enough money to service a $7 million debt. If we had no debt, this would be great. If we had a $3 million this debt would be great. And even if we reduce it to $5 million, it would get us a hell of a lot closer to where we need to be. At $7 million, it's a real economic problem, and it's a challenge, and we must meet that challenge. And that's what this board is trying to do. Yes, but I think everything that we're hearing, we need to have a lot of options on the table, right. and we can't take this vote right away. I think it's way too soon, and we need other options. Well, I'm listening to Look, everybody talk to I personally think that you made some very good, and we, we can get the sense that the authority is something that this group does not want, and I would, I think the Board of Selectmen is open to uh, looking at other alternatives other than the authority to carry out our goal. Such as a commission? Such as a commission, a committee, whatever you want to call it. Yes, sir. Greg uh, Zito, 19 Penry. Um, you keep talking about servicing this debt, servicing this debt. How did, I, I don't know this information. How did we finance this thing? Did we finance with a bond, or did we just take the money out of the bank? Or? We issued uh, short-term notes currently. Okay, and then and then have we looked at the option of refinance? I know the interest rates are short-term well, notes are, are actually issued once a year. Okay, so and then at some point the town would have to uh, issue long-term financing. And what time? Of, what kind of percentage rate are we paying on this? I mean, is the it, current percentage rate is half a percent, point four percent. Pretty well, good. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's why it's not. If, these it's, are on the it's notes. That's on the notes. Long these are on the notes. notes. Right. Long-term long-term rates are about three three right. three and a quarter. But the last three years, we're, we're going to have to make a rate. payment here in August of three hundred fifty thousand on the principal. When when you issue notes at the end of the third year, you have to issue one pay one twentieth of the principal, and every year after that. Well, you can't go forever, right? Right, that's the idea. Right, that's the idea. Just wondering. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, Jay Damon. 1029 Gracebrook Road. Um, I do understand what is involved in running a golf course and what the expenses and. Bingo. And, sorry? She can't hear you in the back here. Too. Oh. <clears throat> in regards to your commission, uh, um, authority. authority. It's not like commission, that. yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, that's, right. that's fine. Um, so you're going to charge a bunch of individuals with running and being in responsible for the golf course. For, for the oversight of running. Oversight of the golf course, right. Making sure that, that the maintenance is up to speed right. and everything else like that. And that's good because a lot of knowledgeable people will be required to be on this committee. Right? Correct. Okay. Um, and at the end result, they have no financial decision on how to run their golf course. And the town will sit, and I understand how towns work. It's a budget, here's your tax department, here's your public health department, and this is what we need for 2010. But no, we don't have the money in the, in the coffers to do this, but five greens on the golf course are destroyed because of the frost or the, or the mites or the, the whatever. And you're not gonna be able to say, you, you can run the golf course the way you want to, but when it comes time to the dollars to do it, we're still going to be standing back and saying, no, 
this is the town authority, town overhead looking down on you, and we will decide how the monies are spent for that golf course. Whereas MDM, I, I don't know them. They go out there and they fix that course daily. And they put their backs into the infrastructure and make sure the irrigation systems work, make sure the greens are fertilized, get rid of the moles and the um, other elements that hurt the greens. And when the town gets involved in this with budgetary restraints, I don't understand how that is going to work. This is not, if you call it an authority, where they can say, we're spending $2 million on our greens this year because we need to do it. And the town's going to say, no, we don't have $2 million for you to spend this year. We'll give you $1.2. We're going to hope, in this, in this scenario that you're describing, that the fees that are generated by the use of the golf course or more than offset the overhead expenses. That would be great. The question is how much more can we get from that to apply to the debt service? That, that's the key. The debt service has already been established. Yes. Right now is the future of the club. You can't just say, hey, you know, we're going to automatically get $2 million a year in revenue, and if we have a bad weather year like we've had this past year, That's we're right. not going to get that. Right. And so the funding has to be maintained on the same level, and even right. more in, in case of the uh, storms we just had, the, the, right. the we're, snow we're fall just a couple right. weeks ago. You know, Oak Lane, they're my neighbors, and they've worked so hard to get themselves organized, and they've had such a terrible time doing it. And what, what, we, what we do know, based on the three-year experience, correct me if I'm wrong, that we would have enough uh, money re generated by fees to pay the operating expenses of the golf course. Right. Is that correct? Well, this is all speculation. No, it's not speculation. It's what's happened in the past three right. years. Well, we don't know what's going to happen three years from now. None of us know. That's, that's right. just oh, that's you're talking about also. You're talking about a risk that's inherent in that process. You're right. You, you, and you, you also talked about down the road of giving it to selling the course to the uh, oh, Excuse me. You, you talked about down the road selling it to like MDM or whatever, and at the end um, trying to get a conservation easement from them. Town Plan and Zoning tried to do that to Oak Lane the other night, last night, and that was shot down. I mean, they have no right in saying that. Well, that's a little different. I mean, we own this property. Well, I understand, but if you're going to sell it to a, a, a management company, you can't all of a sudden just say, when you're done, it's going to. you can't sell it for houses. Right. And they tried to make so, a So you disagree with like what Mr. Mr. Urbano said? That he would like to sell the golf course with a conservation restriction? Oh, oh absolutely. I don't, want to, I don't want to see a conservation restriction on the golf course other than for conservation. I mean, not with houses around. It. Right. And and I, I think and, that was the prefer, general general yeah. intent of why we acquired this property in the first place. Right. And because the alternatives were to totally develop it. No. Mr. Reese, correct me if I'm wrong, he was going to have. He a, pulled a big deal on the town, and he made millions on it. He just took us over the barrel, and it was great. I appreciate the town bought the property. I think that is great. It's a golf course, they should be maintained because there's no houses on them. And to sell off 17 acres for a bunch of three-level condominiums for age-restricted, so people have to be 55 years and older to move into these homes, in five years they can't climb the stairs anymore. <laughs> so at $450,000 minimum. I, this just doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, I, I get carried away, with, yeah. and, I, and I appreciate what you're all trying to do. Right. It's a difficult situation. It There's is. No question and I don't that. think by selling 17 acres now that we're down to that and moving a cell tower is really in the benefit of the town. Um, Toll Brothers is definitely not the operator to come in to do this work, but I've seen their work. It's terrible. Yep. And their infrastructure is the pits. They bring a house in on a street, drop it off a trailer truck, and it sits there for three months in the snow until somebody gets a chance to put the thing together on the lot that it's supposed to go to. They don't care. And all the people that have their homes built are constantly calling back and trying to get, you know, remuneration from them because this went bad or this, this being broke or whatever. They're just a quick in and out company. They want their cash. They want to sell their units and get out. Find another developer. but. Don't do it at Woodbridge Country Club. So, so the bottom line of what you would recommend we do is what? Not sell the open space. Right. So that's 
Sunday. Right. When you say that's how we open space, you mean to Cobra? The house that's over at the corner no, no. of Johnson and, and um, Woodland, or Woodfield. Woodfield, fine. We don't need that one house there. Sell it. That's fine. We are on. Okay, I thought you said <laughs> Sell it. Sell it. Sell it. Which you, you would want if the if the golf course were to be sold, you want a conservation restriction. I if you're if I there's no mention of selling the golf course. This is not what we're talking about. Not tonight, no. But it's going to come up in this discussion. No, Jim's a good guy, and you know well, you know you Jim know. very well. Yeah. But I don't think selling the golf course was in the intention of us buying it in the beginning. Right. So, okay. All right. So you have, all right. There's, there's, there's someone. Did you attend the meeting three years ago? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there's a person who had a different impression of what, what the. Yeah. Right. I didn't think that it was for resale. I thought it was to protect it that's for right. the perpetuity the of the town, open space. That's what I thought. That's okay. it. Yes. Okay. Alright, you're, you're next. You're next. Go ahead. And actually, um, Steve Miller has asked me uh, to read a letter for him. And, you know, Steve is a commercial broker in town. And we know Steve. So this is Steve's words. I think that selling the land for development is not a good idea at this time. The market conditions, as we all know, are depressed and values are down. I feel we should take our time and look at the long term, not react hastily. We should have a feasibility study done by professionals to find out if we're heading in the right direction. I'm not sa saying selling off the underutilized land is a bad thing, just bad timing. I also think the creation of a golf authority needs careful thought. If an authority is created, the makeup of the group should be mandated to include residents familiar with golf courts management or development of large sites, property management, finance, conservation, and marketing. And then uh, I was wondering if I could ask a question just regarding debt service and our rating. This seven million dollars is already on our um, debt ratios and have the rating agencies ever discussed how much more we could take on without paying off before our rating is lowered? They never have? You have no. a sense of where that would be, Tom? Not really, because it's a lot of factors that go into your rating. Mm -hmm. It's not just the debt levels you have, but it's the wealth of the community, the collection rate of the community, the management of the community, the budget. There's, there's a lot of different inputs in a rating, so just and that they don't, you know. I know. And Tom, one of the things, management, absolutely. And yeah. here, for the first time, we may create an authority. I think thought ought to... I'm, I'm actually think, a financial book. But, but it will impact because I've worked with the city of New Haven. They had four parking authorities. They were always, not park, four authorities, one of which was parking. They're footnotes, and they do impact. Um, and one thing, I think this town really, it's wonderful to get half a percent, you know, on, on, uh, t on um, the notes, on the tax anticipation notes. You know, I'd love to see where we're going to wind up with the bonds. And I don't think any of you know to know where that's going to lead us in terms of what could pay what, you know. Um, <coughs> but I think it's of real concern to keep tabs on what our debt is. Right? We do that, yep. yeah. I know you do. I'm just bringing it up and asking if the agencies had seen seven million in one shot raised eyebrows. No, no, that hasn't raised any significant. Okay. And we've gotten a rating from them since we acquired the uh, and it's country club of Woodbridge. We have yeah. the highest rating right. any town our same. size. I know. Right. Right. Thank you. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, so Deborah Jones, uh, speak up. Road, uh, and I guess I would just like to second what Judy Cooper said, and I think that really is, and it's apparent. Can you speak up a little bit so that It's with a number of people that are here tonight that it really impacts and is of concern to a larger portion of this town than you anticipated. And I think that having a, a special town meeting is not the venue for doing this, and I think it should be done in a referendum so that people who are not able to vote that particular night, and it's night, it's not even that day, but that particular night have, have an opportunity to vote absentee and find another way to get their vote heard. So I really think that when you start to make these kinds of major decisions, I think it's time that you turn it back to the townspeople. 
and let us have an opportunity to have a say so we don't have people showing up like this, you know, and, and 400 people carry the day. That should not be the case for serious issues that impact us all. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Kathy Wick, uh, 181 Grimman Road. Um, my friend Amy Morello was unable to be here tonight and she asked me to read this letter into the record. Uh, to the Woodbridge Board of Selectmen. I oppose the proposed ordinance creating a golf authority and hope the Board of Selectmen will reconsider this unprecedented proposal. Woodbridge residents, in accordance with our town charter, approve the purchase of the Country Club of Woodbridge and the issuance of bonds to pay for the purchase. As the owners of this property, Woodbridge residents should retain all their voting powers under the town charter in deciding the future of the Country Club property. To be blunt, the proposed creation of a golf authority is undemocratic. Through a vote of the selectmen, not the residents themselves, the town would adopt an ordinance that strips decision-making authority from residents regarding capital projects, Absolutely. budgeting, and bonding, and cede that authority to five unelected individuals. While the proposed ordinance retains for the Board of Selectmen some authority to approve certain actions of the authority, town residents would lose their existing rights under our charter with respect to the town-owned country club property. Further, while the creation of the authority weakens the voting rights of town residents, it does not minimize their financial responsibility for the authority's debts. For example, the proposed ordinance would grant to the new golf authority the, quote, power to arrange financing in the name of the town of Woodbridge upon approval of its board of selectmen. And that's section 75-4D of the proposed ordinance. Town residents are given no say, yet any financing in the town's name would presumably have to be paid by the town's taxpayers if the golf authority lacks sufficient revenues. Finally, the ordinance contemplates that the town would lease the country club land and associated buildings to the newly created golf authority. Would the leased property serve as the collateral for financing and bonding by the authority, leaving the property vulnerable to the satisfaction of any bad debts? In light of these and other concerns, I respectfully urge the Board of Selectmen to reject the current proposal to create a golf authority. Please instead engage the existing boards and commissions and the town's residents in a thorough discussion of the country club's future. Our town has a long tradition of thoughtful analysis and robust discussion regarding town projects. In recent years, the town has successfully completed two major projects, the library and firehouse, through a deliberative and democratic process. Why should the country club be any different? Respectfully submitted, Amy. <coughs> Go ahead. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll stand up here. Uh, Matt Giglietti, 14 Brightwood Road. Uh, as I said at the last meeting, I've been involved in this process from day one. And I think the response of the townspeople at the town meeting to buy the club was clear. Um, I think everyone here wants to retain it as a country club, as a golf course, whatever. <coughs> Nobody wants to see it developed. And so far, I think for the past three years, we've had a committee basically that started when we met on that cold uh, uh, March rainy day to buy the club, and, and it's Tony, myself, Ed, Jerry, and Jim Perito. Uh, we've continued to meet and bring in experts and try and figure out a way to make this work, and in my, my job, in, in a way that's budgetarily responsible. We immediately got an operator, MDM Golf, and that looked like a great deal. He was energetic, uh, he knew the business, he operated other golf courses, he came in and came in running and we were going home with him. We really were. Um, we, we saw a future. We had a deal on the table that would have, and as I said at the last meeting, if we could find somebody to walk in and say, here's $7 million, I think everybody at this table, everybody on the Board of Finance would say, it's yours, we're out of debt, run it as a golf course. We would we'd put a restriction on it. Unfortunately, as time went by, let me just explain this to you. MDM Golf is one person. It's not an organization, it's one man. And he's got a lot of golf courses he runs. He's got a lot of, a lot of things on his plate. And unfortunately, when the deal was consummated, which was presented to the Board of Selectmen, everything's been presented to the Board of Selectmen, it was a tremendous deal that would have given us the revenue to pay off our debt and get out of the golf course business. Because if you've seen any Board of Finance meetings, I've said on a dozen occasions, we do not belong in the golf course business. Unfortunately, 
thanks to Attorney Weiner, there was this issue of bankruptcy. And I'll be perfectly honest with you. One of the complaints I've had with MDM Golf, as a CPA who does this, I wanted to see financial responsibility. Everybody here who's been at these meetings can attest to this. Who are we dealing with here? Is he worth $10 million? Is he worth $1 million? We have never gotten an answer as to exactly who we're signing these contracts with, other than the fact he operates golf courses. When this bankruptcy issue came up, it was clear we couldn't sign a deal with him because if he went bankrupt, which is a real possibility, this is a separate LLC he's operating under, <clears throat> we would basically be forced to have a $3.5 million golf course with a $7 million debt. I think everybody here is sensitive to the tax situation. Now, as far as, the, as, far as this golf authority, I think that's it was just a, I don't know anything about authorities or commissions. I think what we're, what the Board of Selectmen were looking to do is to have a separate committee, as we do with everything. They just appointed a building committee tonight for the Beecher Road School. We have, I've been on building committees for other things. We had building committees when we, built, when we built the fire department, when we built the library. This is the way this town operates. We have committees that report to the Board of Selectmen. I think the intent of what they were looking to do is to have a committee, and the five people they put on there to answer somebody's question, we have two guys with extensive business experience, building experience. We have a gentleman that knows more about golf course Who's maintenance. Excuse me? Well, why are these Who people? Are they? The, the people that have, have been, Andrew Esposito Sr. Excuse me, Matt. Mm. Dorothy Martino, 38 and How could you pick a committee before we even I'm just telling them. you the names I've heard that are going to I didn't pick anything. We've got Andrew well, Esposito, Dolph Luciani. Z. Kotchkis, who, who's been an invaluable asset to us, he knows more about golf course management. When he's, he's pointed out to us many things that Mr. Menchetti hasn't done, such as aerating greens. He's, he's been now. 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 now, you know as well as anybody, right after Labor Day you're supposed to aerate greens. But yeah, that's but what the, happened in this town right after Labor Day? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let, me, let, me just finish, let me just finish what I, what I have to say. So, whatever this committee is, maybe there are other people we could put on, I'm not saying it, but I think the intent was to have a committee to take on this, all this responsibility and report back to the Board of Selectmen. What they would do, I know there's nobody out there. We, we had one proposal, and that was MDM Golf. Arnold, Arnold Palmer Golf wanted nothing to do with it, and all these other major organizations walked away. One person wanted to run it, and he ran it. Clearly, I think, uh, uh, the, I'm just going to touch on the Toll Brothers proposal for a minute. That is clearly a way for us to pay down the debt, raise some revenue. On November the 30th, so let me finish please. On November the 30th, as the town always does, there will be a town meeting. If clearly everybody comes out tonight and votes against it, it's over. And it looks like that might happen. Keep in mind though, again, I'm, I'm from a budgetary point of view, we immediately are going to incur a $350,000 a year principal payment on the, on the country club which will be made up in taxes, obviously. And if that's, the, if that's the will of the people, that is what will happen. But I find it somewhat disturbing that I'm, I'm hearing that the Board of Selectmen are operating under some veil of secrecy. Everything we have done has been brought to the Board of Selectmen, brought to the Board of Finance, and I, in no way or shape or form is anything being done to hurt the taxpayers of Woodbridge. I think if anything, we're, we're clearly more worried about the taxpayers of Woodbridge, which is Excuse me, why were where we at? Okay? Thank you. I wasn't planning to say anything until just now. I hope Jerry took down the names of the people that you mentioned who were being talked about to be on the board. I want to propose now that anybody that was mentioned is not on the board. I'm appalled that that it's you, you just said everything has been open. But I just heard that you've been talking about who's going to be on the board before we've even had a chance to vote. Who's going to be on the board? That's not This is not the board. This is not the board. I think we should be on the board. You're not on the board. Since people are talking about it before we can have an authority or a commission is a problem. I know what I'm about. Thank you. I know what you want. Any other comments? Can I make a quick yes. suggestion? <laughs> yes. It'll be difficult for me to walk over there. Yep. Uh, Art of Jojo, 5 Lewis Drive. I think one common theme, the gentleman over there suggested this, there's a lack of communication, and I 
probably am the first one who has not brought myself up to speed in terms of what the alternatives are. In theory, there is a lot that you're doing which has a fiscal um, purpose and hope, uh, uh, undertones and overtones behind it, which is prudent, which is how it should be. Would it be possible to have, in a simple one or two pages, the alternatives that we have, status quo, alternative one, upfront payment, ongoing expenses, alternative two, upfront expenses, payment, ongoing expenses. I think all of us would operate from the same sheet rather than everybody having different pieces of information, making, uh, you know, looking at that from their own preconceived points of view. Uh, and I think if, um, if there's any help needed, I'll volunteer. I'll help. Uh, you, know, you know, we can lay out the qualitative aspects as to with this alternative, here are the qualitative pros and cons. We need to operate from one place. All of you have that very clear in your minds. But I don't think we have that. Good suggestion. Good suggestion. Yep, OK. Yes, ma'am. Um, Debbie Hines, um, I'm listening, you're going to be doing a vote in a few minutes as to whether this is going to exist or not as a commission or an authority. Um, I truly believe before this gets voted on that it would be really good to see what the responsibilities of what this commission will do. Authority, it sounds like it's not going to work. But a commission, if this is something to be proposed, Instead of voting on something where you have clearly not enough information for anyone to understand exactly the intent of it, I would think that it would be a good idea to table this, get an idea of what you want to say and do with this commission, and as far as the appointments go, if there are other experts in it, I know that there's a limited amount of people that volunteer for things, which is a great opportunity for people to be more involved than having the same people showing up on commissions over and over and over again. But to bring out a lot of more people to be involved on things. But I really believe that if you can put it in the paper, the website, a lot of the elderly people do not use computers in order to get the information. And as far as 79 goes, as this is Lockyer points, you can't hear anybody on it. Here, you're saying that no one can hear in this one room with the numbers of people. Get the information out so that it's a lot better for everyone to understand and be, I mean, you're clear on it. No one will be, I've been on uh, boards too, um, and you don't. And you want to make it as clear as possible, so you don't have crowds showing up with. What are you talking about? Right. I think your suggestion is very well taken, and my recommendation to the board of selectmen is that we're not going to act on this proposed authority, ordinance authority. I think there is a feeling that a commission or committee is appropriate to assist the board of selectmen in the oversight of the uh, country club of Woodbridge. And so we'll start that process again. We will prepare a draft ordinance or resolution, and we, ordinance, I think it will be. And then we'll go through the process again. The ordinance committee will do that. I'll make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen. They will vote to hold a public hearing on that, and then this process will continue. But I think we've heard the will of the, voter, of the voters tonight, of the people at least who are here, and uh, this is sort of a cumbersome thing, this uh, golf authority. The, the purpose here is assistance to the Board of Selectmen and the oversight. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. And, mm -hmm. and so I think all the people here have made their voices loud and clear. We appreciate your coming out tonight and giving us your views. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on, on Tuesday. You, you have to withdraw this, don't you? No, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of that, Donald. We'll, yeah, take, care we'll of take care of that. Yeah. Well, I, we want to make sure you take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> no one is going to vote in no. secret, believe me. Right. Yeah. Yes, right. <clears throat> Amy Morello's letter covered some of the things that were bothering me. Debbie Plains has made a further suggestion that I was going to make. People are very much concerned that in all of those pages that cover the 130D on your golf authority, that they will lose control of the town. One of the things that's worrying them is that it may end up bypassing the charter. And this we certainly don't want. None of us want that. No. And 
the suggestion that was made, why not start this out as a regular commission? And then, if that isn't working, or if you need to go further, then proceed to the Golf Authority. And I think you have already stated this is what you intend to do. I applaud you for suggesting. Well, thank you. And uh, so we'll do it in public. We, we all our meetings are in public, but for can I make a motion to no. take no action? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To speak. Bob, go ahead. Bob Hill, 68A Corn Hill Road. You know, I listened to everything here tonight and had a chance to see the last couple of meetings on Channel 79, um, the last Board of Selectmen meeting, the special meeting that, that took place. Um, and one of the key elements that exists here is a level of communication, some of which, you know, falls on the residents, some of which is there needs to be a proactive way of getting the information <laughs> out. I know that's in certain places, but <coughs> We need to do a better job of that. Um, in relation to that, when I watched 79, not everyone gets 79 in, in, in town. Uh, I think my kids wish that we didn't get 79. <laughs> um, anyway, um, when I watched that, there were a couple things that I noticed in watching it. And I had an opportunity the other day. I called Ed and said, look, I got a couple concerns with the issues that I saw in the presentation, one of which was the, which is out, which I was glad to hear, uh, Jerry, the right of first refusal. That was a bad idea. Uh, I know in business, you know, it's like taking one person to the dance and saying, by the way, when we get to the dance, if so-and-so's there, I'm going with her, okay? So you don't necessarily get the person who's going to make a good offer really to the table because they know they could be spending a lot of money to get to a point to give it to somebody else. So that was, that was good that you eliminated that. Uh, the other thing having to do with the relocation of the cell tower um, I know I've had some comments that, you know, and really related to um, uh, Mr. Slato's comments about, you know, what it was going to cost to relocate it and that there needed to be some oversight or bidding process to ensure that we don't end up having to spend, you know, $399,000.50 on relocating it. Uh, a comment I made in relation to that was to look at the existing contracts with the cell tower company, and I don't know what. Uh, if that bared any fruit in terms of whether there was any extensions, renegotiation we could do with the cell tower, uh, tower company to provide them additional terms so that maybe they would relocate it and it wouldn't be on our dime, something of, of that sort. I'm going to keep going through the role. So that was, you know, that really related to the, the, the Cole Brothers thing. I had a chance to go by the property and take a look at it. And, uh, I think one of the comments that I heard here tonight, and, and I made it to Ed the other day when I spoke with him, was, you know, it may come down to, in the end, based on what we're talking about here, townspeople may say, you know something? Yeah, I know it's going to reduce debt by doing that, but we don't want it. And that seems to be the case that people just want to leave it the way it is, and, and that's fine and well, too. If we do it, though, let's do it the right way. If our thought is that in five years from now, the property will be worth more, which maybe it will, maybe it won't. In looking at that property, the, the difficulty, the amount of ledge that's there, I'm going to guess that... Um, you would probably need a, a large firm like a Toll Brothers type U.S. home that could deal with those type of complexities of a property of that sort because that is not going to be an easy property to deal with. Now, let's switch over to one issue, but there's two issues under it, okay? And as the discussion started tonight, it really started as one discussion going back and forth. I think where um, a better job can be done uh, in terms of the communication issue on the golf, whether it's a golf authority, golf commission, whatever it happens to be. Um, it was on the agenda that we're, you know, that uh, we now, I think, through the discussion today, have a better understanding that selling the property to Toll Brothers, that doesn't necessarily have to happen. We could do that at any time. It sounds like the issue about managing the golf course is more of a crisis that we're dealing with because at this point, the um, MDM is not going to go out and get their own financing to purchase the golf course, or maybe they don't have the capital to do that. We don't know what that looks like. Um, I guess in retrospect, in, in a going forward, as we look at either them or anyone else that would operate the golf course, I'd make a few suggestions here. First of all, just I, I deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. First of all, where we're selling it to is that we get their financials in terms of understanding you know, what they're worth so we know the potential liability. I know we're collecting financials right now to understand 
what liabilities are if they're getting in trouble or whatever, but we need to understand how strong the operator is in terms of background uh, and financial background of them. The other part of it is, is as we looked at, we purchased the golf course, whether we operate or someone else operates it, we have to require that operator to provide us their financials on a monthly basis, yearly basis, and a tax return basis. Why? Because when we get to the point where we're sitting negotiating with them and they don't want to provide us this information, and also you need to get the, the, the list of the people who got there and a lot of other stuff. Because at the point that the negotiation breaks down with the operator, you have to have the ability to market the property. And yes, I did hear that we need a national firm, whatever happens to be, to sell it. But we don't know how that business is cash flowing, really. We don't know. So we can only market it because right now it's only worth whatever as land, and anyone coming in who operates golf courses is going to say, okay, I'll pay you based on a multiple on cash flow or return on investment, but they would need to see those financials. So if we enter into a, if we extend with the current people, okay, and obviously they don't want to do a long-term lease until we make capital improvements and move into a triple net lease and, and so on and so forth, and uh, that kind of, we need to have financials that are collected so that at some point our negotiation breaks down and part of the agreement is that we can use those to put together a package to be able to send out to golf course operators, look at this, you can put X percent down, here's your return on investment. That's how you sell the golf course. So you know, those are some of the things that, that I've thought of in, in watching what's going on. But I think the key thing on the golf authority right now is I think because of this thing that went around town, people went to this site here and they saw what the state statute before, if we were to consider whatever the commission is or the authority, this board needs to, or a group, or whoever it's going to be, put together what that responsibility is, get it publicized, maybe mail it out, whatever it happens to be, so that everyone knows what it's going to be. And maybe on the 15th or 30th that you outline and go through that whole thing so that everyone knows what that responsibility is. Because tonight, most of the comments were made related to was created from this, which was right, because people are like, hey, wait a minute, it's going to be more, we're going to give them more than they, they should. So those are my comments, and hopefully, you know, we don't, uh, I know you've got to do something about the, the golf course because you're under a crisis situation. The Toll Brothers thing, that doesn't necessarily have to happen right away. So, you know, uh, that's it. Good. Okay, so is there any, my neighbor's Yes. John Listro, Pumpkin Patch Road. I'm listening to all this, whether we call this an authority or commission. Yes, we got you. We speak loud. call this thing. We have a basic problem here. Unless somebody starts planning on opening this golf course in April and starts it now, in April we're going to wind up with a wildlife conservatory that's yep, not going to be right. worth 10 cents. Right. So I think the sense of urgency has to be, what are we going to do with this thing now? We're very this much guy is leaving in January. Who's going to take over? We're very much and if I understand your reasoning here is, you wanted this commission, authority, gang, whatever you call it, to make recommendations and find somebody to do it. Exactly. Well, I think that should be done, and it should be done now. That's right. We, we agree. Do. We agree. Okay. Thank you. So that's me. Is there anyone else who has any comments they want to make? If not, then I'll close the public meeting, and I'll turn to Mr. Coyne here for a motion. And I call a motion <coughs> to take no action on the golf authority. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of seeking I discussion. But um, I, I, I think I just think it's important for us to hear what everyone has said. Uh, we do have to get going on making sure this club is open next season. So perhaps we need to tap into the people that we think are the best experts that could have served on whatever, an authority or whatever. Um, I still think what I heard tonight is a ton of Toll Brothers. So these issues are intertwined, and no one is able to separate them. And I think that we've got to, um, I, I may be speaking sort of out of protocol as the newest board member, so that would be my excuse, is that um, we need to figure out a way to get the Toll Brothers on a referendum, but I don't even want to see it on that until we actually do a feasibility study, a capital needs assessment. Um, and engage the residents and the existing boards. I just feel like a lot of what's happening here is that people don't see a plan. We we did something one year at a time for three years. It's okay. We did the best we could, I guess. But I think people are frustrated because they don't see a longer-term plan. 
and we got to make this club open next season, but we got to get a plan together, and that's my discussion. Okay. Any further comments? If I may, yeah, there is a plan, and Tony spelled it out in the in the cafeteria last week, and the plan provides for the cash that Toll Brothers has offered the town in two payments. There's no mortgage involved. It's cash from a, a well-respected and well-financed. Uh, national builder, and then there is projected tax revenue. There is a plan, and it was put forward at the informational hearing last week, and will be put forward again on Tuesday. So, to say that there but it's isn't, I think, is disingenuous. It's a plan for 17 acres. That is a plan for 17 acres, which then actually sets the course to some degree for the rest of the property. And I think we've got to take a holistic look at this whole property. And if the residents don't want to do anything but pay the seven million dollars and never have it developed that's totally fine but I think we are we have a plan for one part of it but it, it's and it's not in agreement with our town plan of conservation and development which is an issue and I think we need to fix all these pieces so it's actually a total plan okay. we, we can do it immediately we're gonna have a meeting of the board of selectmen on Tuesday night we also have a regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen the following week. Right. So we will either, on, probably on the following week, we will have a new proposed language for a commission. And that's the night of the 22nd. Uh, I believe it's the night of the 22nd. Exactly. And so the, the Ordinance Committee will meet before that. Okay. They'll make a recommendation to all of us. We'll schedule that for a public hearing in yeah. December. Yeah. And we'll send that out to everybody. Because that, that, it seems to me that's the piece that really needs to get That's the exactly right. right. It doesn't affect that at all. This is a separate matter of the establishment of this committee. So we're still now going to hear the, the Toll Brothers proposal comes next, next week. Yes. The vote on the Toll Brothers is still not by referendum. Not, not yet. The problem with referendum, though, is that we needed to get a schedule um, of that night of, of how it appeared in order to... If the the call. Was, You're talking about the call yeah, to meeting. That's right. Get a call. The Board of Selectmen will act on that on Tonight? Tuesday night. On Tuesday night. This coming Tuesday? Tuesday, uh, November, what is it? 15th. 15th. The problem is that, that, in other words, people, if somebody wanted to get a referendum, they have to go from the 15th and get 200 signatures from the 15th in order to change the open town. Well, that's, that's, the, that's the process. The yeah, that, that's the stat. But let me just explain it. There are two ways to have the ref. Have, I think I said it. Take a special town meeting and turn it into a referendum. You're right, you have a petition that is presented within five days of the scheduled special town meeting. That removes the vote at the special town meeting. You have to have 200 people on that signature. Right. The other way to do it is for the Board of Selectmen themselves to, within five days of the special town meeting, vote to have it have that question put on a referendum, a, a machine ballot, as that, opposed to having it done. That that's something that, that's not, I don't, they haven't discussed it yet, I don't think. I, mean, I think it would be a good idea, but I would like to Make it easier for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear you. Okay. We're, we're, we're here. We're here in the comments. You know. Sorry. Okay. Well, thank you for coming out. We didn't vote. Oh, we didn't vote. All in favor? All right. Vote. Passing unanimous. Okay. All right. We go on. You want to take a break? Yeah. Let's take a brief recess here for five minutes.